Hi, so these gasifiers, they're awesome. I mean, they're old, they're, but they're awesome. And they're awesome because, to be honest, there's hardly anything to them and just about nothing in it matters. Nothing is really critical. It can make loads and loads of choices just based on how you want it to look. The essential system consists of four parts. The bit where you generate the gas, the bit where you filter and clean the gas, the bit where you cool the gas, and then the bit where you use the gas. And then the last video was the bit where we use it. And that bit really was the generator. And I got that generator, a six and a half, power, six and a half horsepower engine, to burn this wood gas in to generate some electricity from it. Now I did that first because that actually dictates the size of everything else. So you decide what engine you're going to use this for, how much gas you want to produce, and that's going to dictate everything else. Now, we're going to do the other parts in the other videos, but now we're jumping back to the bit where you make the gas, because that bit is directly related to the generator size. Now, that generator size tells you how big to make it. If you have a look at that FEMA book that I pointed out to you, uh, Oak Ridge, who are the guys who are behind that book, actually bothered to work out how big everything needed to be for given engine sizes. So all I did was look it up, and when I looked it up, they told me I needed this. This is a bit of steel pipe, and it is um, four and a half inch in diameter and 400 millimeters long. And I just got that straight from the book. So that bit, the critical bit, or one of the critical bits, is dictated by your engine size. Clearly, the bigger the engine, the bigger the pipe. The smaller the engine, the smaller the pipe. It's as simple as that. Now, this seems like a bit of a cheat, given that we're, this video is all about how to make the uh, burner unit. In fact, that's it. That is the burner unit. All we have to do is stuff that full of our biomass, light a fire in here, and that will do everything else for us, which is just amazing when you think about it. So I have nothing to do to this. I just have to buy this bit of pipe. And I bought this bit of pipe six millimeters thick, um, four and a half inch diameter, 400 millimeters long, or if you like, 125 millimeters diameter, 400 millimeters long. Now, the style of gasifier is, is a downdraft uh, stratified gasser, gasifier. Because we stuff it full of here, we like to fire here, and all the air is sucked down there. Now, it's stratified because everything happens in distinct layers. The ash will form at the bottom layer here. This layer here is the reduction layer, then there's the actual bit that actually burns. Then there's a bit where it gets turned into carbon, which is called the pyrolysis layer. Then there's a layer that's going to be drying out from all the heat you're generating. And then there's a layer of the uh, biomass that you put in there. And this will just gradually fall down as that works and you keep topping it up to maintain those layers. So it's kind of self-leveling. Now you can make lots of different types. We're making this downdraft one because we just don't have to do anything to the pipe. I mean, there's nothing to do to it. It's all done. But you can make them updraft. You can put two pipes in here where you draw the air out, uh, air through here into where the flame zone is. Or you can um, modify this in lots of various ways, which I think are unnecessarily complicated. Or you can just buy a pipe like this and use it as is, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, obviously, the air is being sucked in here down to the f uh, burning area here. All that gas is going to be given off and it's going to just disappear. We need a method of collecting it. In order to collect it, we need to put a jacket around it. Now, FEMA talk about the jacket enclosing the whole thing with the space at the bottom to collect everything. Now, I have seen a load of different designs where it's jacketed around about here or jacketed here or jacketed here or here and they perform just fine. So clearly, and the size of the jacket that you put on that on that doesn't make a blind bit of difference. What we're going to use is this thing. It's a beer keg. It's stainless steel, uh, and you can get these on eBay for about twenty pounds. Now they're supposed to be the property of the original beer company, but to be honest, nobody really cares one way or the other about them. You find them in scrapyards. You find them lying around. A friend gave me this. You buy them off of eBay, so they're quite cool, they're quite a nice size, it's stainless steel, and we're going to basically drop that pipe into here. So when we burn that, then all the gas will be collected here, and we stick a hole in the top, and we can collect the gas from there. That's it, that's the unit finished. Now we're going to uh, put that in there by cutting a hole in the top. 
and sticking that pipe in and dropping it down to about that level or so. Clearly we need something at the bottom here to catch everything, to hold all the mass in there, it'll just drop straight through the pipe. And that grate actually can be a stainless steel colander, it could be some rebar welded onto a ring, it's just a whole load of things. Uh, we're probably going to put a stainless steel colander on there, and then a couple of chains here so we can give it a shake every now and then. Although equally, I have um, seen versions where they don't even bother with that, they just put a colander on the bottom and when they come to relight it, they give it a clean out then. So there'll be a clean out port in here as well. So, so little of this truly matters. Like I said, all you really need to do is decide on the size of pipe based on your engine size and stick it a jacket of some description around it and you're done. Now we've got a friend, actually he's a friend of Luke's, who works in the steel fabrication industry and he's making us a flange to go on here so we can just drop it on there. So he's gonna actually make the flange for us, which is like really kind of him, hey? So thank you very much, Mike, it's well appreciated. We'll drop that on there, weld it, pop it into there and we're done. Now, I have never welded before. Actually, it's not strictly true. About 10 years ago, I gave it a go and um, I managed one crackle with the arc weld because I could basically not see through the, <laughs> the face mask I was wearing. So, I bought a face mask. This is auto darkening. You can actually see through it. So I'm going to use this to try my hand at welding. And of course, a couple of uh, pair of welding gloves. And I have no idea how good or bad I'm going to be at that, but I'm certainly going to give it a go. And I think that's the spirit, really, especially with lots of these things. You don't really know how good or bad you're going to be until you try. And you'll certainly never be good un unless you try. So it's worth giving things a go. And I mean, we're not talking about a fortune here. 12 quid, 5 quid, 25 pounds, 20 pounds. This is not a great deal of money. If I muck up, well, I'll muck up 12 quid's worth of something. That's a bit of a shame, but I'll have to order another one. But I'm certainly going to practice before, and so I'm going to practice my welding and basically weld that steel flange that Mike gives us onto here, cut the top of here, drop it in. And that's all there is to it. That will be the gasifier unit made. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's an overview of it, but now I've got to get on and cut that out. So watch out for the next part.